Good morning, everybody. This is morning prayer for Wednesday, November 27th from St. John's Anglican Church in Southampton, Pennsylvania. I'm Father Jay. I am Elizabeth. We do not have any saintly commemorations to talk about, so let's get going. Yeah. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we, we have, have erred and, and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who bless you, Thank you. who are mm-hmm. penitent according, according to your promises, promises declared to all people in Christ, Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. O O be be joyful joyful in the the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. Psalm 71, my whole verse. In you, O Lord, have I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Rescue me and deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my rock and my refuge, where I may always return. You have promised to help me, for you are my stronghold and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the ungodly, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel. For you, O Lord God, are the one I long for. You are my hope, even from my youth. Through you have I been upheld ever since I was born. You took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. O let my mouth be filled with your praise, that I may sing of your glory all the day long. Cast me not away in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails me. For my enemies speak against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Go not far from me, O God. My God, make haste to help me. Let those who are my adversaries be confounded and perish. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with shame and dishonor. As for me, I will always patiently abide and will praise you more and more. My mouth shall speak daily of your righteousness and salvation, for I will not know the end of them. I will go forth in the strength of the Lord God and will make mention of your righteousness, yours alone. You, O God, have taught me from my youth. Even to this day I am telling of your wondrous works. Forsake me not, O God, in my old age, when I am gray-headed, until I have proclaimed your strength in this generation, and your power to all those who are yet to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. Who is like you, O God? O what great troubles and adversities you have shown me, and yet you have turned and refreshed me. Indeed, you have brought me again from the depths of the earth. You have brought me to great honor and comforted me on every side. Therefore will I praise you and your faithfulness, O God, playing on a stringed instrument. 
To you I will sing with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will rejoice when I sing to you, and so will my soul, which you have delivered. My tongue also shall speak of your righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded and brought to shame who seek to do me evil. Glory Glory be be to to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and and ever ever shall be, world world without without end. end. Amen. Amen. Sirach chapter 7. Do no evil, and evil will never overtake you. That seems demonstrably untrue. Stay away from wrong, and it will turn away from you. Do not sow in the furrows of injustice, and you will not reap a sevenfold crop. Do not seek from the Lord high office or the seat of honor from the king. Do not assert your righteousness before the Lord or display your wisdom before the king. Do not seek to become a judge, or you may be unable to root out injustice. You may be partial to the powerful and so mar your integrity. Commit no offense against the public, and do not disgrace yourself among the people. Do not commit a sin twice, for even, not even for one will you go unpunished. Do not say, he will consider the great number of my gifts, and when I make an offering to the Most High God, he will accept it. Do not grow weary when you pray. Do not neglect to give alms. Do not ridicule a person who is embittered in spirit, for there is one who humbles and exalts. That's good. Mm -hmm. Do not devise a lie against your brother or do the same to a friend. Refuse to utter any lie, for it is a habit that results in no good. Do not babble in the assembly of the elders and do not repeat yourself when you pray. Mm. Do not hate hard labor or farm work, which was created by the Most High. Do not enroll in the ranks of sinners. Remember that retribution does not delay. Humble yourself to the utmost, for the punishment of the ungodly is fire and worms. Do not exchange a friend for money or a real brother for the gold of Ophir. Do not dismiss a wise and good wife, for her charm is worth more than gold. Do not abuse slaves who work faithfully or hired laborers who devote themselves to their task. Let your soul love intelligent slaves. Do not withhold from them their freedom. Do you have cattle? (coughs) Look after them. If they are, if they are, you all right? I don't know. Do you, do you, do you have cattle? Look after Look them. Look after them. If they are profitable to you, keep them. Hmm. Do you have children? Look after them. If they are profitable to you, keep them. <laughs> do you have children? Discipline them and make them obedient from their youth. Do you have daughters? Be concerned for their chastity and do not show yourself too indulgent with them. Do have sons be concerned for their chastity? Mm. Give a daughter in marriage and you complete a great task, but give her to a sensible man. Do you have a wife who pleases you? Do not divorce her, but do not trust yourself to one whom you detest. With all your heart, honor your father. And do not forget the the birth pangs of your mother. Remember that it was of your parents that you were born. How can you repay what they have given to you? With all your soul, fear the Lord and revere his priests. With all your might, love your maker and do not neglect his ministers. Fear the Lord and honor the priest and give him his portion as you have been commanded. The first fruits, the guilt offering, the gift of the shoulders, the sacrifice of sanctification, and the first fruits of the holy things. Stretch out your hand to the poor so that your blessing may be complete. Give graciously to all the living. Do not withhold kindness even from the dead. Do not avoid those who weep, but mourn with those who mourn. Do not hesitate to visit the sick. 
because for such deeds you will be loved. In all you do, remember the end of your life, and then you will never sin. Also demonstrably untrue. Yes. Here ends the reading. But these are proverbs. These are something to be strived for. Not They are not prophecy. Right. Yes. All right. Arise, shine, for, for your, your light, light has come. come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds my wife. Deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. I'm not gloomy. No, you're just cloudy. Yes. <laughs> but over, over you, you the, the Lord, Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. you. Nations, Nations will stream to your light, and kings, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your, dawning. your gates will always be open. By day, day or night, they will never be shut. They, they will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Second reading, Acts chapter 21 into the middle of 22. Paul is being harassed by the Jews. As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the tribune, May I say something to you? And he said, the tribune said, Do you know Greek? Are you not the Egyptian then who recently stirred up a revolt and led the 4,000 men of the assassins out into the wilderness? Paul replied, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no obscure city. I beg you, permit me to speak to the people. And when he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the steps, motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great hush, he addressed them in the Hebrew language, saying, Brothers and sisters, hear the defense, brothers and fathers, sorry, hear the defense that I now make before you. And when they had heard he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet. And he said, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God as all of you are this day. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear me witness. From them I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those also who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was on my way and drew near to Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me, and I fell to the ground. And heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now, those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? <clears throat> and the Lord said to me, Rise and go into Damascus. And there you will be told all that it is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me and came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and I saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste. And get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. 
And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Up to this word, they had listened to him. But then, when he said said that Jesus was going to send him to the Gentiles, but then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One note about this that kind of connects, talks about the historicity of Acts. He's talking to the tribune, and the tribune says, Are you that Egyptian that stirred up a revolt and led 4,000 men of the assassins out into the wilderness? If you read the, the book of Josephus, um, you remember in, in the Gospels when Jesus was talking about um, in the abomination of desolation, when he was saying, if you see people running around saying, I'm the Christ, or there's the Christ over there, don't believe him. For many false Christs will rise up. Remember when Jesus was saying that? Mm -hmm. This started happening, basically as Jesus predicted, immediately after he ascended. There was a rash of people claiming to be the Messiah. And their little, their little following would rise up. They would get found out. The Messiah would get killed. The band would go away. But there was also great political unrest. And so there was Josephus records um, a guy from Israel who led several thousand Sakari or assassins, um, to basically try to take over Jerusalem, and they got wiped out. And that's, it's, we're pretty sure that's what, what's being talked about here. So it's just one little note about the, the actual historicity of Acts. Blessed be the Lord, the, the God, God of Israel. Israel. He, has he has come, come to his people and set them free. free. He, he has raised, raised up for us a mighty Savior, Savior born, born of the house of his servant David. David. Through, Through his, his holy, holy prophets, prophets he, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He, he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This, this was the oath he swore to our father Abraham. To <clears> set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to, to give, give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he, he will come, come again to judge the living and the dead. dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, saints the, forgiven, the forgiveness of sins, the, the resurrection of the body, and, and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us by your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor run into any danger, and that, guided by your Spirit, we may do what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh. And hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will now have a pause while we lift up our own intercessory prayers. We encourage you to do the same. All right, let's conclude with the general thanksgiving. Almighty, Almighty God, God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy, unworthy servants, servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. We are doing a uh, an episode for Thanksgiving morning. Yep. So I hope you'll join us then. And if not, we'll see you on Friday.